Initiating landing procedure, everyone on standby. Hello, my name is Robert Llewellyn, and I play the character Crichton 2X4B523P. What a jerky middle name. Craig Charles, I play Dave Lister. Chris Barry, and I'm playing Arnold J. Rimmer. Danny John Jules, and I play Cat. Sophie Winkleman, and I am playing Katarina Bartikowski. She used to be a Red Dwarf science officer, and now she's the senior officer because she had to get rid of Rimmer because he was a bit crap. Dirk Naylor, I'm writer, director, executive producer, and I haven't slept in about four months. The show's called Back to Earth. It's about Lister and Rimmer and Crichton and Cat finding a way back to Earth in the early part of the 20th, uh, 21st century. Crichton certainly has issues with that period of time because he knows what's going to happen to certain technologies, which I think is very amusing that we're all used to now. And he also is very confused when he talks to what he thinks are uh, small uh, sentient droids that are parked around the street. And when he talks to them, they don't answer back and they turn out to be letterboxes. They're just laughing at your face, Crichton. Nothing to worry about. Back in the 21st century, they laughed at freaks all the time. They used to have TV shows on Saturday nights where they'd get out all the freaks, make them sing and dance, and then point and laugh at them. Simple people, simple tastes. And as with all sort of Red Dwarf stories, there's a sting in the tail at the end. You have to live up to the memory of the very best moments from the best shows. So there is... You know, there's a weight there uh, and a massive expectation. We are the first British show to use the Red One cameras. So I knew that the pictures would then, using the Red Ones, would look uh, really terrific. In terms of production values, it's better than anything we ever did. And it's one of the very, very best stories we've ever done ever. It does not seem 10 or 11 years since we last did this show because uh, it has been so easy to sort of click back into gear. It's really like a family reuniting. I and mean, we were instantly, we were instantly back exactly where we were 10 years ago. Same cruel jokes with me, me as the butt of them. But, you know, it really is such fun to be back, back together. We're like sort of long lost brothers who meet each other again every time we do a series. And it's always great to meet family members after having not seen them for a while. That's what Red Dwarf's like. As soon as you get the costumes on, it's like we've never been away. Yeah, and all the old banter still there. We'll turn, turn away from him and do a bit of shaking. That'd be great. A lot of the stuff we've done so far that we can't tell what it's really going to look like has been done on, on green screen. So we're standing on a sort of big floor with, with, you know, that looks like the floor of a spaceship, but there's nothing else. There's just huge green stuff around us. We're not quite sure which way we're facing. <laughs> <laughs> well, particularly with the cast of the Red Dwarf, it's, it's, you know, it's a Mickey Mouse outfit at the best of times. So we're often facing the wrong way. No, you're actually looking at the wall and you're supposed to be, oh, am I? Oh, which way is it? You know, so it's, that's been quite confusing to get our heads around that. Yeah, flying on wires is, is always tricky, I suppose. Uh, it's all about balance and things like that. But it's the stuff that I love doing. I love doing the physical stuff. A lot of times you get a stuntman in to, uh, to do all the, all the best bits. I, I kind of like, you know, crashing through windows and banging into walls and stuff like that. They're such fun to do because there's so many people involved and there's people lying down on the floor with big rubber tentacles and bits of wire that they're trying to manipulate. And then you're meant to be being thrown around in a very confined space but trying not to tread on someone's head. <laughs> so there's always another element that's off camera of extreme danger, not for us, but for other people. I was walking through the cargo deck, right? Minding my own damn business. When all of a sudden... The bunk room scenes are probably the heart of the and soul of Red Dwarf. A lot of people out there associate the bunk room scenes as being the sort of core. We're seeing performances, um, especially from Lister and sides of Lister, we've just, we've never seen before. Action! We filmed in a, 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 an obscure little street in Manchester. Um, called, I can't remember the name, Coron Coron something, Coronation Street, something like that. <laughs> Which was really surreal. For Crichton to be standing in front of the Rover's return was quite special. Action! And we've also shot in West London um, on the street in daytime with the public noticing. <laughs> kind of a hard cast to ignore, I suppose. We had two guys there, one of whom, I think, happened to be wearing an Ace Rimmer T-shirt, which uh, I, I don't know whether he got wind of the fact we were going to be there, but uh, it was mighty strange. I'm Chris. I'm Howard. Uh, we were passing and we're in Red Dwarf. It's awesome. Action! 
Turn round and look at them. The costume is, without doubt, from my point of view, the best Crichton's ever had. I think it looks fantastic. It's the mo most comfortable and also allows me to move the most because that was often very difficult in the old ones. If I wanted to sit down, I had to give 10 minutes notice. If I wanted to have a call to the gentleman's area, <laughs> gentleman's toilet facilities, I had to give about two hours notice. You know, So this is brilliant. I don't want to give anything away, but Crichton's even got a zip where it really counts. Oh, yes, thank you. I've never known a show where the crew was so interested in, in seeing the footage. I mean, these are kind of hardened you know, guys who are making TV shows all the time, wanting to come into the edits to see what the rushes were like, and were really excited with what we saw. It's very hard to judge how big a cult following is in actual numbers, but it does feel like it's a lot of people who really fanatically love the show, but they're sort of surrounded by a much bigger pool of people who thought, oh yeah, that was really good, that show. So, which adds up to a fairly chunky audience, I think. You know, so there are, there's some real, there are absolute hardcore dwarfies who will be watching every frame with worrying <laughs> intensity, <laughs> which makes us very nervous. But then there's a, I think there's a quite a large following of sort of relaxed viewers who quite like Red Dwarf. Cabin crew, prepare for landing. <laughs>